Uh, so hi everyone. Today we will talking about some pros and cons of using Cassandra as a database. Uh, so let's get started. So how I came to know about Cassandra? So there was a project uh, last year that I was working on that is RDBMS. But as the data set size was increasing, the team suggested that we should switch quickly switch to uh, some other big data handling data uh, database. And the first one that came in was Cassandra. So let me give you a brief of what the project that I was working on. So basically the project was uh, used to write about 1 lakh entries per day at a particular timestamp in the whole day uh, into the database and the reads are quite frequent uh, as like when a user comes in in the real time we need to serve about 200 300 entries or uh, that are related to a particular user so i think the use case was very clear uh, basically uh, rdbms is pretty good uh, as it provides a lot of facilities uh, in terms of uh, data manipulation but uh, one thing it is very quite poor is with latency so there is a quote by David Teplow that states, uh, RDBMS is quite good on volume front, but its fundamental nature makes it ill suited for velocity and variety. So you really can't have variety of data, and also the latency is a big, big issue. And as I told you that we were, uh, we were, we need to serve to the user in real time, and the user base is quite big. So eventually, RDBMS was not able to suffice our requirements. That is why we switched to Cassandra. Why did we switch to Cassandra? First of all, the right latency. So data structures followed in RDBMS are B plus trees, while in Cassandra it is log structured merge trees. So B plus trees are comparatively slower than Cassandra, hence writing is comparatively slower in RDBMS as compared to Cassandra. Uh, talking about read complexity, so even in read cases, uh, Cassandra has a complexity of uh, log O of constant. Where in case of uh, RDBMS, as it, is as it uses B plus trees, it is way uh, greater than constant hence as uh, cassandra was better in both read and write uh, read and write hence uh, we switched from rdbms to cassandra but there are a few major issues that you need to know before switching to cassandra especially when your entire data entire problem statement has been designed considering rdbms so let's know a few issues so one of the major issues that i faced was we can't join tables in cassandra so like in uh, so like in sql as you know you are uh, using SQL uh, in RDBMS. You can join tables very easily, but this does not work in Cassandra. As Cassandra is indexed, so joining table is not possible, and it and it has this very big limitation. Apart from that, uh, you really can't update the values for partition and cluster keys. So basically, uh, let me explain you what are partition and cluster keys. So in RDBMS, we have a concept of primary key and composite primary key. So primary key is a unique field that identifies the uh, with, that identifies uniquely every entry in the database. Now, a composite primary key is a combination of columns that represents a uh, that uniquely identifies every single row in the database. For example, if you have a school register uh, in which you are mapping uh, students' marks for a particular subject, so in that case, the student's name and subject would composite uh, together will form the composite primary key. So in case of uh, Cassandra, partition key is a primary key and cluster keys can be taken as a uh, secondary primary keys, you can say that. So if in uh, RDBMS, if we have a composite primary key ABC, now in Cassandra, this becomes the partition key becomes A, the first column that we are considering and BC becomes a cluster keys. So as you can't uh, join tables, so assume that uh, you wish to update certain partition keys uh, for example that the id for some uh, student has changed so in that case that can't be updated in case of rdbms that can be done but in case of cassandra you can't update it the only resort is to delete such entries and reinsert them so you won't believe there were times like uh, within 15 days i was deleting the whole data structure uh, the database and then reinserting the whole database this was the condition once declared, new new column, uh, no new column can be declared as a primary or uh, partition or cluster key. So, for example, if you have a particular column that you wish to be a primary key or a composite primary key part of that, in Cassandra you can't do that. Again, you need to delete the whole schema and then reinsert it, because there is some sort of indexing that is happening at partition and cluster key levels, and that can't be changed. Hence, if you wish to add a new column as a cluster or partition key, you can't do that. Uh, you can't do a where clause on every column now this is one of the biggest problem and that we even didn't consider that this can also be a limitation the where clause problem can be divided into two parts where clause on non cluster or partition columns so 
uh, if you look into this particular example, assume that we have a table with schema A, B, C, D, E with partition key is A and cluster key is B, C and non-primary key are D and E. Non-primary key means that there's the information, right? Now, you can't apply a where clause on D and E. You just can't do it. There is no alternate also. So if you wish to filter out on value of uh, some suppose marks, you wish to see which students have scored 50, more than 50, you can't do that because the score hasn't been considered in the partition or cluster key, right? As you can't declare a new column to partition or cluster key, you just have no means to apply a where clause on D and E. So an alternate one can think of is key. Okay, if I can't apply a where clause on non-primary keys, let's first make it a primary key and then update it. But that can be done because as I told you in the previous step that you can't declare a new column as a primary or cluster key. So there's just no way to update values if they are not declared as a partition or cluster keys. When you are applying a party, when you are applying a where clause on cluster keys also, you can't, uh, it is not that easy because that follows a particular sequence. For example, if you see in this particular example, A, B, C, D, E, where A is a partition key and cluster keys are B and C, right? And non-primary keys are D and B. So assume that you wish to apply a where clause on column C, right? So in that case, you need to provide the previous two values as well, A, B. So you just can't simply go and say, key, okay, select star from where C equals to X, Y, Z. You need to make a query like select, uh, select star from X where a equals to this, B equals to this, and then C equals to the where clause. So at times this where clause won't be able to help you out as well. So these are the major three issues that I faced. Uh, one was you can't join tables. Others, you can't update values in partition and cluster keys. And third, you can't have a where clause on non-partition or cluster keys. And even if you have a where clause on cluster keys, you need to provide values for the previous columns that has been declared as partition cluster key. So these are some of the major limitations that I figured out. Uh, so uh, for quite my, my two cents on Cassandra is that uh, as most of the blocks say it's that key before designing any database or table using Cassandra, you need to think of all the where clauses. You need to think of the whole structure. So it can't be the case that you declare the database once and then after two or three months, you are making an update. So eventually if your product is in growth phase, uh, try avoiding Cassandra because you won't be able to update it that frequently. Uh, when, because uh, this was, has been my experience also like when I was when I was trying to update data, it was more easy to delete the whole data set, uh, database and then reinsert it than updating values. So before, before using Cassandra, just look at your use case properly and design all the where clause queries and all the things that all the queries should be at your hand. These are the queries that I would be making and do try to avoid it for uh, products that are under exploration.